Good morning. Three weeks ago, Monsignor Peter preached on the parish vision, fully alive. And last week, Father Evan preached rooted in Christ. Today is my turn. <laughs> my topic is reflecting his, God, his love and mercy. Reflecting God's love and mercy. So today we celebrate Gaudate Sunday, rejoicing day, rejoicing Sunday, because we are coming close to the birth of Christ. As you see, the only twice a year we vest this rose color sign of joy, and we lit the rose color candle just to remind ourselves we should be joyful. You know, joy is the abiding presence of Christ in our soul. Without joy, we cannot be fully alive. We have to make sure before we talk about fully alive, do you have the joy of Christ? I always say, uh, joy, happiness and joy is not the same thing. You know, happiness and sadness comes and goes, right? When we become successful in life, we are happy. When we fail in life, we are sad. Part of life. <laughs> Happiness and sadness comes and goes. These are just emotions. You know, joy is the abiding presence of Christ in our soul. No matter what happens in life, if we have the joy of Christ, nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. Mother Teresa used to say to her sisters, sisters, if you are not joyful, you are not happy, if you are not happy here in convent, go home. What are you doing here if you are not joyful? <laughs> we don't follow Christ to be sad. Joy to the world. Right? That's what there is a shepherd sang. Joy to the world. People, God wants us to be joyful. The prophet Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8, Nehemiah and Ezra, the prophet Nehemiah and Ezra, they lived in a very difficult time in history. When the Israelites were in exile, when they lost everything, when they lost their temple, Nehemiah and Israel were guiding people back to their land to restore them. What, uh, what uh, Nehemiah said in Nehemiah chapter 8, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is my strength. Despite they lost everything, what gave him strength? Joy. No matter what happens in life, what gives us interior strength is joy. Maintain your joy. God wants us to be joyful. So, for my purpose, reflecting God's love and mercy, uh, I want you to read after you go home. I want you to read and pray Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. To 21. I want to say it slowly. <laughs> you can't hear me. The letter to Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. Please read it and pray. You know, when St. Paul went to the community of Ephesians to preach, the Ephesian community were not fully alive. He wanted them to be fully alive, but they were not. So what did he do? What St. Paul did in this scripture, he knelt down. That's how the scripture starts in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. He knelt down and what he prayed? Heavenly Father, make my people full in glory. Fill them in glory. That's how he prayed. <laughs> That's why we need to pray. If this parish to be fully alive, Heavenly Father, he fills these people in glory. The temple in Israel filled with glory. We need that. <laughs> we need the glory of God. St. Irenaeus, I think it's in the one of Ballet outside, St. Irenaeus, 
the glory of God is being fully alive. So let me just quote one verse of that, Ephesians chapter 3, for our purpose here. And that Christ may dwell in your hearts, and through faith that you rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know Christ's love beyond all our understanding. <laughs> That's who we want you to be. That's I want to be. To know the love of Christ, the height, the length, the depth. <laughs> That's what to fill our hearts in glory means. When I reflect on God's love, two scripture passages come to my heart. Number one is that widow, that poor widow. She gave that one coin <laughs> all her livelihood. She gave it all. Why? She loved God. <laughs> she loved people. When we love God, we give everything. What we have, not in our surplus. What we have, we give. You know, Jesus commended this woman. Why? She gave it from her heart. The second passage, it comes to my mind, is Matthew chapter 10, verse 42, when Jesus said, anyone who gives a glass of water has a great reward in heaven. Imagine, a glass of water. <laughs> it's not a big deal, right, to give a glass of water, especially in this country. We have plenty of water. But as long as we love him from our heart, that's what matters. It's not how much. Now, one of my priest friends in Boston, he used to tell me, people, if you really don't mean it, don't tell me I love you. <laughs> Only if you love me, if you mean it, then say I love you from the heart. You know, this past six months, when I was in this church, I was watching every ministry group in this parish. You know, when in my discernment, St. Peter Parish, uh, St. Peter Chanel parishioners, I consider you as the widow, that poor widow. Why? I watched you carefully. Everybody loves from their heart. I didn't see people when they do to impress others, or I didn't see when people do to gratify themselves. You do everything from your heart. You know, that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, see what is happening in our church. Only in this Christmas, I'm sure previous Christmas, I don't know, <laughs> I was not here, but this Christmas, the number of food and gifts people bring here to give to the poor, that's a widow, <laughs> that's a poor widow. It's not because you had too much, but you brought it. See what St. Vincent de Paul group do. Every Saturday, I see them outside, give them to the poor. That's a poor widow. She gave everything she had. Look at Knight of Columbus, Stephen Ministry, all groups. You do it for God and for people. So thank you. Is there a room to grow in love? Of course. We want you, your heart to be filled with the glory of God. That's our goal. <laughs> but thank you. The Holy Spirit is already working powerfully. So, in today's gospel, in today's gospel, the priest and Levites ask John, who are you? <laughs> Good question, right? If I ask you, who are you? If I ask you, who are you? If I ask you, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? That's a good question, right? How would you define yourself? <laughs> that is the key to love God. Unless we know our identity, we will not love God. Our identity. We need to claim, I am the son of God. I am the daughter of God. David, go away from me. Your accusation, I'm not going to take it. I am saved. I am loved. I am forgiven. That's who you are. You know, John the Baptist knew who he was and who he was not. That's spiritual identity. Claim your identity. Without encountering the living Christ, I don't think we will know who we are. You know, we, we develop, right, all of us? We develop our false identity. I am poor. I am sinner. I am not forgiven. Who cares? God has forgiven us already on the cross. Claim your identity. I am forgiven. I am loved. I am saved. I am a daughter of God. 
You know, this devil, a liar, I know him. He lies every day to me. Go away. I am saved. I am forgiven. So, let me uh, tell you my experience, how I experience the living Christ, how I, I encounter the risen Christ. It was March 23rd, 2001. I was in Boston. I was going through a tough time in my life. The worst part of my life. Everything came against me. Interior desert, exterior rejection. It's just too much, too much was going on in my life. And uh, I was reading Thomas Merton's book, the, the Desert Spirituality. So I was praying, praying, Lord, please help me. So March 23rd, 2001, at midnight, it was Lent because I couldn't sleep because of the anxiety, the desert dryness in my life. I knelt down. I said, Lord, I gave you my life since I was 14 years old. I was ninth grade when I went to seminary. Please help me. I surrender. You know what happened? <laughs> my room was full of light. My hand was waving. The first time I was speaking in tongue and I was singing this scripture. If you, are into, uh, if you want, I can give you, I have many copies. I made a copies. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. This is a prayer we pray in, before every Eucharistic prayer. <laughs> this, is a, this is a scripture. Help me to go back to seminary second time. When in Ethiopia, I went to seminary and they asked me to start again in Boston. This is scripture. I know I have to be a priest. <laughs> this is before Eucharistic prayer. We pray, Hosanna in the highest heaven. So this reading is the Palm Sunday reading when Jesus went on donkey on Palm Sunday. You see that donkey? <laughs> this is a book about my spiritual journey. One of my friends from Florida, she wrote, Father Tamru, after you gave me a spiritual direction, I want to write a book about your spiritual journey. Monsignor Peter reviewed it for a spiritual direction. We're going to publish it soon, so hopefully you will read it. <laughs> but God is so good. If we are just be grateful, we are surrounded by God's goodness. Okay, let me say a few words about mercy. I, I think it's enough about love. Mercy, what I remember mercy, in my 15 years of priesthood, I've been a priest for 15 years now, in my 15 years of priesthood, when I think about mercy, I recall the number of people came to, to, to confession and I recall their tears. You know, in confession room, we put napkins, right? People come with tears, with broken hearted, Today's gospel, the God heals the brokenhearted. They come with their tears. That confessional room, I see a lot of tears. You know, they come with a brokenhearted. What we do as a priest, through the ministry of the church, I absolve you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God never rejects even one. Pass mercy, mercy, mercy. You know, God is kind and rich in mercy. I was a director of Centro Catolico Spanish Church in Holy Spirit Church for many years. Every year on Good Friday, I mean, during Lent, every Friday, I, I was praying uh, Station of the Cross with the Spanish community. And between every Station of the Cross, you know how the Spanish people pray? Perdona, perdona me, Señor. Perdona, perdona me, Señor. Perdona, perdona me, Señor. Perdona, perdona me, Señor. Means, Lord, have mercy on me. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Amen.